You're about to enjoy an interview with Sunny Harris. Sunny has been trading the market since 1981. She's got tons of great experience. She's also developed a unique indicator called Sunny Bands that she's been trading profitably for over 30 years. She's got a lot of great insights to share. I hope you enjoy. Hi, Sunny. It's fantastic to have you here. I can't uh, wait to have a great, uh, great chat. Thank you. I appreciate it, Leah. Perfect, perfect. So typically how we get started is uh, just want to understand how you got into trading uh, your journey at, uh, you know, at a high level, because I know you've discussed it uh, some other uh, some other podcasts and then start digging into maybe the strategic elements, your strategies and, you know, what uh, new and experienced traders, uh, mm-hmm. some of that advice that you would give. OK, sounds good. So with. So with that being said, how did you, uh, how did you get, get into started? this crazy trading game? Yeah. Well, it was an accident. Um, I sold my shares of the software company that I had in 1980. And I had a whole lot of money and I did what I thought was the smart thing. I gave it to money managers. And they, in the first three weeks, they lost $75,000. And I thought, you know, I can do that poorly on my own. I take my money back and then I start reading and plotting charts with uh, pencil and graph paper. So it's the charts that I was watching that really became my trading. Okay. No, that's fantastic. And I know there's a a wealth of information today with social media and things like that. But, um, you know, back when you started trading, I'm assuming. (laughs) Well, there wasn't even an internet. Okay. You know, in 1981, there was no internet. So everything was... And in fact, I published a monthly magazine called Trader's Catalog and Resource Guide that was half Yellow Pages. It was the Yellow Pages to everybody that's anybody in this industry. And then, of course, when the Internet came, I quit publishing it because I knew there wasn't going to be any more paper. Sure, sure. No, that's that's fantastic. So I guess uh, you know it's funny because I ended up sort of getting into trading for the same same reason oh, really? uh, when I first started trading. Yeah, yeah. I, I I remember the market was going up and I was making trades and I'm like, oh, my portfolio should go up. And I was noticing uh, my portfolio balance was still going down just from all the sheer commissions that they were trading right. back then. I mean, so I was like, you know what, I got to figure this out for myself. So that's sort of how I how I got into it, too. Um, it's cool. But I guess... Uh, going back to, you know, uh, 1981, I mean, how did you, I mean, you just started plotting the, the patterns and I know that you're very mathematical oriented, but how in the world did, uh, did you start finding patterns and, and, you know, what did you do to kind of develop your first strategies? Huh, that's interesting. Let me pull out something out of my drawer here. If I can find it. Uh, well, I can't find it, but I had an Ehrlich cycle finder, which was a uh, an accordion kind of thing that you could test cycles with. And I had a parallel uh, ruler so I could draw parallel lines and then slide it down the same and have the same parallel line just at a different place. Things like that. I mean, it was it was mechanical tools from way back when. Yeah, that's fantastic. So it had to be like no technical resources. Did you find right. someone that said, oh, chart tra- the trends or any anything like that or? No, there was nothing. Uh, I did. Amazing. I did find a book in the in the bookstore, and I don't remember what year this was, but it was John Murphy's, and it was technical analysis of the futures markets. Then, okay. now it's technical analysis of the financial markets because it's it's everything. But I bought that book, and I I remember I paid fifty dollars for it, and I thought, boy, that's an expensive book. I hope it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess it paid itself in spades, huh? In spades, and then then I got yeah. another copy because I'd completely highlighted the first copy. So I got another copy and worked on being more judicious in my highlighting, <laughs> and then I got a third copy because John Murphy was having lunch with me one day, and I wanted him to sign it. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, that's that's how you know you've read a book a few too many times. Um, you know, <laughs> you when have you, three copies. When, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done that on, you know, not three copies, but on, on two copies. But no, that's that's great. I learned everything that was in his book then. And of course, all the technical patterns are in his book. You know, so then when you were, you know, first developing your initial strategies, you know, what were you trying to accomplish? Were they breakouts, mean reversion? Or how did you go about thinking, you know what, this is this is how I'm going to tackle the market. This is what I believe. The first thing I used 
Well, I, I mean, I tried moving averages, and of course they don't work. And then I tried RSI, and that didn't work. And I tried stochastics, and, you know, they say stochastics calls uh, 10 out of the last five highs. So stochastics didn't do it. So I got a little book that was a three-ring binder. It wasn't even a bound book by Jake Bernstein. And I don't remember the title of it now, and I no longer have a copy of it. But um, he said MACD filtered with ADX was a good strategy. So I tried that, and it, and it worked very nicely. So that's where I started. And then I started developing my own uh, indicators, which is where my dynamic moving average came from. I guess the genesis of the sunny bands? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, going back in time, when did you, you know, start developing your sunny bands? And maybe for uh, the audience, they might want to, you know, they might not know what the sunny bands are just as of yet. Yeah. Well, I started developing a, them right out of the gate. I started playing with mathematical puzzles and trying to solve equations. And the whole genesis, as you said, of that was because the dynamic moving average was something I developed to... Uh, pretty much eliminate whipsaw. Moving averages go back and forth over each other during sideways periods, and you get lots of whips, lots of false signals because they're whipsaw, and you lose money that you made during the trending periods, and now your money's all gone, and you have to start looking for another trend. So my dynamic moving average doesn't whipsaw back and forth like that. And once I figured that out, and that took me 18 months to come up with that. I was working 18 hours a day, seven days a week for 18 months yeah. and developed the mathematics for that. And yeah. then, you know, the sunny bands is just two bands on either side of the dynamic moving average. Sure, the reason sure. I call it dynamic is because it internal to the code, it calculates its own uh, moving average lengths. So with okay. every tick of the market, it's changing its length. Okay. So you're passing in like that you did dynamic parameters essentially based on, you know, recent history. I don't have to pass it in any parameters. Okay. 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 It calculates them all. Okay. And no, it's that's, using that's... matrix algebra and calculus to figure it out. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I think it's important for, for people to understand. Like I, I know uh, new traders often have you know, hopes of jumping into the market and being in, in, instantly profitable. rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Make more money than a doctor, but without the seven year degree, right? Um, right. It's just not realistic. Right. But uh, I think that's that's important. So I know that some of the strategies that, that I've created, I mean, it takes a very, very long time to find something that works yeah. for you. And I think that really uh, does. I think the readers, the people who are new uh, can appreciate that. And the people who are experienced can also appreciate, <laughs> Absolutely. appreciate that. So that's fantastic. Absolutely. And, yeah, I get uh, so, so many people write me every day and mm -hmm. say, I want to be a trader because I want the freedom and the extra money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. You've got to start out with losses. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. So I, that's a that's a great question. How long did it take for you uh, to become profitable and, and come, I'm assuming, you know, once you found your, your sunny band sets when you started to turn a profit? No, I started turning profit with the MACD and ADX filter. Okay. okay. So I was, right. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I was profitable from the beginning. Okay. So, except one, one day, I saw the market, uh, let's see what it was. It would close on Fridays down, and then on Mondays it would open up. And I saw that happen three weeks in a row, and I thought, I've got a system. <laughs> of course, the next three times I applied it, it lost money. <laughs> right, right, right. So then that's, no, that's when I started realizing, you know, you've got to do a little more testing than that. Okay. Right, right. And then uh, in regards to your trading system, um, you're, I'm assuming you're primarily a, a day trader or um, what type of frequency are you trading on? And does that change over time? I trade the ES, the S&P E-mini, uh, on a five-minute chart. And I trade stocks on a daily chart. So it's okay. two completely different time frames, but both with sunny bands. Sunny okay. Bands works on any time frame, any symbol. So whatever I want to look at it, I, I take the, the rules from there. 
Sure. Okay. And I'm assuming Sunny Bands, how you calculate that, that's not public, right? That's secret sauce. Yeah. <laughs> I, I figured. I figured as much. Do you have any, you know, advice for, for new traders or anything like that? Do you, you know, because you, you run a group, right? Uh, you have any, I have a uh, Tuesday sorry. morning live trading room for an hour. I okay. don't really run a group. Uh, different people okay. show up every time. Okay. Perfect. So then you're live trading and you're just uh, showing what, what you're doing and, and some of yeah. your trades? Yeah, I'm telling them, here's what I'm looking at and here's why I think I'm going to take this okay. next trade. And then I push okay. the button and say, okay, I took that trade and here's why. Uh, what would you say some of, the, uh, some of the big common mistakes or misconceptions that new traders would have? Well, they're usually watching my sunny bands because that's what I'm trading mm -hmm. with. And, sure. uh, you know, they ask things like, why did you take that trade right there? Mm -hmm. And I'll explain right. the, what I was looking at. And then, uh, then they want to know, why don't you just trade when the purple and gold cross over each other and just trade those signals? Well, right. they're too late. The sunny band signals are much faster. And they get in very sure. close to the bottom and very out very close to the top. Okay. So, you know, they're just asking specific questions about my indicators, really. Sure. Sure. Okay. And then, um, so you've been trading sunny bands for a while. Have you ever... 36 had years. Use? That's amazing. So, and that, that's been, you know, it's, it's amazing that you've had a sustained, you know, system for that long. I feel like mm -hmm. my systems <laughs> never, never last that long. And maybe that's due to the, you know, complexity of the math behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's a great question. What, what do you feel the reason is that, um, you know, the sunny bands have worked so long? Maybe it's that 18 months of discovery. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not optimizing or adapting any of the parameters. It calculates right. its own parameters internally, okay. and it adapts to any and every market. So I don't have to adapt it. It's doing its own adapting. Yeah. Okay. That's that's fantastic. So really, you know, your the sunny bands of two years ago might be a little bit different than the sunny bands of today, and that's why it's automatically adjusting yeah. and continually. Working. But in 36 huh. years, I've never changed anything in the code except yeah. to add bells and whistles. Now, are you trading uh, from a discretionary uh, is that, or you, you know, have like an automatic execution or how are you doing that to, today? Uh, I, I trade it systematically by watching okay. the Sunday bands and following my rules. I've got a little okay. eight, eight page uh, presentation on my website that sure. says the Sunday bands rule. So you can read mm -hmm. them and get to know them really well. Okay. And it's, it's not complicated at all. And I follow those okay. rules. I think the sunny bands, there's beauty in both its simplicity and its complexity, right? So mm -hmm. you've got one strategy that, that just continually works because I, you know, because it's obviously changing. It's the dynamically changing. I know mm -hmm. that, um, you know, a lot of other traders are looking at strategies. They create these strategies. They work for a period of time and then they, mm -hmm. they stop working for a period mm -hmm. of time. So I think that's, that's really impressive where, you know, you can have this dynamically adjusting strategy and then then that's it which yeah. i guess leaves you a lot of time for some other things too right well <laughs> yeah I, to. it leaves me time to do podcasts and write a book okay and sure talk, i talk try to talk to my customers all the time okay you know and they're always Perfect. surprised that i've got my phone number on my website and they can call me up and i chat with them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was surprised about that because uh, I emailed you and uh, you're like, you got back to me right away. I said, yeah, sure. Just give me a call. I'm like, that's that's fantastic. It's usually not that easy. Yeah, so that's, that's great. Well, you know, okay. most most uh, people in this industry, you scour their websites and there's no phone number there. Right, right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. OK. And the and then, email is uh, always customer support at, you know, right, so you can't right. even get directly to the person. Yeah, mine's, yeah, just, no, absolutely. mine's just sunny at Money Mentor. Okay. And then you said you have customers and you've written some books. Can you tell me a little bit about both of those? I've written seven books now. Okay. Uh, the first one was Trading 101, How to Trade Like a Pro, many years ago. Okay. okay. And then after a few years, I rewrote that one at the behest of John Wiley and Sons. And they wanted okay. to rename it, so they called that one Getting Started in Trading. It's part of their Getting Started series. Okay. Then I wrote Trading 102, Getting Down to Business, which is more about the business of trading and testing your system and mm -hmm. figuring out how to come up with a system. Mm -hmm. uh, then there was Electronic Day Trading 101, which at, at the time, Electronic Day Trading was Zoe's houses. So you'd okay. go to the uh, place where they had you know, 100 computer screens 
and you get behind there and you're seeing real-time data flash through and you make your trades that way. It wasn't in your home yet at that point. Okay. So I wrote that book so people could understand what electronic day trading was. And let's see, what did I write next? Uh, getting started. Oh. What else did I write? Anyway, then I wrote uh, Trade Station Made Easy, which was okay. 746 pages of Made Easy. <laughs> made Easy <laughs> for, for us, not for you. That's a lot, that's a lot of work. <laughs> that's a lot of work. It took me 12 years to write that one. So there was, I mean, I gave it up at one point and said, that's it. I've had it. I'm not going to ever finish yeah. this thing. Every time I get close, they change Trade Station. Okay. So I, I just couldn't conquer it. And then finally I decided I'm just going to plow through this and get it done. So I spent six okay. months every night writing the book got wow. get, and got it out. The one that I'm doing now is the Definitive Guide to Trade Station's Easy Language and uh, OOEL Programming. And it's 1,250 pages. Is, is Trade Station paying you for, for creating their manual for them? <laughs> I think they should. That's that's phenomenal. Uh, so I'm assuming that's what you use today for your for your trade, I do. trade station. I do. Okay. I've been okay. using Trade Station since 1986. Okay. No, that's amazing. Okay. When so, I call um, in for support and they ask me what my customer number is, I say it's, it's a thousand. They're like, "What's the rest of it?" Because <laughs> no, everybody's it. got everybody's got customer numbers in the millions now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. No, that's great. So, um, so backing up to some of the materials in your books, um, could you give me like a high level of maybe some of the tips and uh, tricks that you uh, that you gave to some of the beginners of trading 101? And I think the other thing that might be really interesting is you know we've never really talked about how to run your trading like a business, how you back test, and some of the business st side of things. So I think those things would be fantastic to cover. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Um... My brother read both of my books, and he said, oh, all you say is test a system, get a system that works, and then trade the system. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. that's about it. That's, yeah. that's what all of my books are about, really, is just develop a system, test it. If it works, follow it. Mm -hmm. So and when and people ask me, well, do you believe in the psychology of trading, or what do you do about the psychology of trading? I just say follow the system. Yeah. If you're not following your system, you haven't tested it well enough. Mm -hmm. So I teach people easy language, which is Trade Station's programming language, and I and I teach them how to program and test strategies, and I teach them how to optimize successfully, because uh, you just can't throw an optimization at it and let it run for a week and then take the answer. That doesn't work. Right. Uh, that'll be too curve fit, and and it won't work into the future. Right. Which is the problem with most strategies. They've over-optimized them because the software will do it, and then they don't work. It's one of those things where um, I created a, you know, I'm a systematic trader also, and it's, you know, I think we have an advantage over, you know, discretionary tradings in that, in that regard is that we just have mm -hmm. to follow the system. There's no real intuition or, or anything like that there. Do you feel like we're playing an easier game than some of the, the discretionary traders? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Oh, they've got to they've got to worry about their new no, nerves and their mood and everything else. Right. All right. we have to do now, is when it says buy, you buy, and when it says sell, you yep. sell, and that's about it. Yeah. It's boring if you're doing it right. Right. No, that is true. That is true. Now, do you feel like? Um, you know, I, I see some of the discretionary traders hit uh, you know a lot more, a lot higher percentage annual returns than I do. Um, and do you feel like that's just due to like sample size just because there's so many more discretionary traders or do you feel like it's just a statistical anomaly or what's your, what's your thoughts on that? Do you feel like we're, you know, maybe the pros and cons of being a systematic trader? Well, I, I don't, didn't know that the discretionary traders were making a lot more than I was. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might you might be making just as much. I know that uh, there's some traders like Christian Kualamagi or you know the short bear that are just making uh, you know insane you know thousand percent return years. Uh, I know I'm not anywhere near that personally. Yeah. So you yeah. you might be. No, I'm not a thousand percent. I'm not batting a thousand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's a consistent income, and that's what right. that's what I like. Why I like the systematic approach, 
because sure. I don't have a thousand percent year and then a minus hundred percent year. Right, right. You know, I, I'm consistent, yeah. so that's that's the thing that matters to me. Sure, sure. No, I I agree with that because I was thinking, you know what? Um, you know, first of all, I think if you're either you're either systematic or discretionary, I'm not like I couldn't be a discretionary trader. Maybe that's just because of my love for technology and I like the programming just as much as as the trading. Yeah. Uh, but I was I was thinking hard about this and um, and I felt like you know what? I think there's just a lot more staying power to systematic trading. One mm -hmm. uh, due to uh, the psychology. I know when I you know started trading discretionary, I was. I had some troubles, especially, mm -hmm. uh, you know, right. when the market swings, you start to like really think about things and, you know, you feel like you're forcing trades when, in certain areas. So I feel like we have to, you know, battle ourselves less, in, you know, as mm -hmm. opposed to just battling the market. And, um, you know, there's also things that systematic traders can test uh, and whether that it's really, uh, you know, repeatable over, mm -hmm. over long mm -hmm. periods of time, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. Uh, Does a Friday down close mean a Monday up close? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. Right. Got to test um, it. Okay. Yeah. So then in regards to, you know, uh, obviously you're an established businesswoman, both from a trading perspective and, and money mentor. Um, can you give us some insight into, you know, what, what having a real trading business is, is like? And you... uh, well, it's, you got to, one of your costs of doing business is losses. I just count that mm -hmm. losses is a cost of doing business. That's just part of it. Right. But, you know, you need a business plan. You need a spreadsheet at least with your budget in it. Right. Uh, you need to make plans for what your strategy is going to make you and how much money you're going to take out of that and whether you're going to reinvest or not. Right. Uh, you know, still the most important part of your business is doing your programming and testing your rules. If you make 10% per year in a profit in a retail business, you're doing well. Right. Likewise in trading, if you're making 10% per year, you're doing pretty well. And people right. don't people don't want to hear that. They want to think, I'm going to make 1000% every year. <laughs> right. And you right. don't. You just don't. Yeah. So, if you can live on that 10% per year and still have some income to withdraw for yourself, that's the point at which you start trading. If your right, right. plans all show that and you've all you've worked it all out and done all the math. And I always recommend that people start in simulation mode. I don't ever want to see people start with real money out right out the bat. In regards to, um, you know, some of your mentors, I know that, you know, going back, you know, to you started trading in 81. So you've got so much more experience than have you seen it all? I'm sure you can pretty much you've seen it all. Yeah. Um, have you, did you have any mentors along the way or did you have to, you know, forge al alone, so to speak? Uh, kind of both in a way. Well, I, I, um, I called, a, I got a book by Larry Williams, uh, the gold one. I've got a gold one and a silver one and I don't remember the names of them. But anyway, hmm. um, short term, future, sort, I, something like that. Okay. So I looked in the book and I saw that his publishing office was down the street from me. So, Convenient. not knowing any better, I called him up and said, can I come down and have you sign my book? And he said, sure, come on over. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know who Larry Williams was yet. I just knew he wrote this great book and he was a neighbor. Right. So I went over and we've been friends ever since. I'm still in contact with him, you know, and he's, he's an amazing trader and a great guy. And, uh, you know, if anybody's been a mentor for me, it would be Larry. No, and then also fast. Jake Bernstein, because of the book that I bought that had the MACD with ADX filter on it. You know, I've right. gotten to know Jake over the years. So those two would probably be my early mentors. You've been, you were an assembly programmer, as yeah. far as I remember. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, very mathematical oriented. Do you feel like, you know, that's achievable for, for most people being, doing, you know, some of that math that you did? Or is there other ways to, for <laughs> probably them to generate not. Probably not. Probably okay. not. Um, okay. Everybody I talk to and they say, what do you do? And I say, I'm a mathematician. They usually turn and walk away. Right. You know, or, the, or first they'll say, well, I was terrible at math in school. I never got past geometry. You know, right, and right. a PhD in math is so much farther than geometry. It's, it's right. unfathomable. Right. So, so did you get a PhD in math? Yeah. Okay, okay. 
Yeah. So that makes sense why you're doing all of the, you know, I, I don't all I the complicated stuff. And, yeah, yeah, all the complicated stuff. Okay. Um, so I guess in regards to, you know, maybe, um, you know, some of the people that you mentor and, you know, that are getting into trading these days, how would you have them, you know, approach developing their first strategy? Well, you know, I still suggest that some of the ba- best learning is done by plotting your charts by hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, there's something that, that you get from doing that that inculates into your neurology and then you know things like if you shoot baskets and you do them over and over and over then your neurology will know it's like your hand knows how to shoot those baskets and uh, if you do that with charts then you'll know a lot more than you know you know right and then you can start seeing patterns because you see that you're plotting the same thing you plotted last week. Mm-hmm. So you've got to see patterns. And from those patterns, you develop theories. And from the theories, then you get into the programming of it. Sure. And well, easy language good. with TradeStation really is easy. Okay. So I mean, I've got a, a I did a little... guide. Yeah. What? Oh, the definitive guide, definitive? that's, that's yeah. different. That's different. <laughs> okay, okay. But um, I've got a little course on my website, Money Mentor, that's called Easy Language Forum, and Sam Tennis and I did five weeks of easy language lessons. It costs a whole $79, and you can go through and learn everything there is to know. You're not the only one that's mentioned to draw charts by hand. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had uh, one other person uh, way, way back in the day that said, you know what, Leo, uh, one of the best exercises I ever did was charting by hand. There's just something that you get mm-hmm. that almost no one's willing to do, uh, mm-hmm. but there's something that you get by, by doing it. So I ended up getting a, some graph paper and I said, you know what, uh, I'll just do this by hand. And it's, it's interesting because there's two, th- you know, doing, you know, charting by hand and doing a deep dive, even if you're a discretionary trader, you know, really going through all those charts and, and, you know, staring at them for hours, trying to identify patterns, you know, you, you fall asleep saying this was a completely useless exercise. Then you wake up the next day and be like, wait a second. I think, I think there was something there. So that's at Mm -hmm. least, at least my, my experience. Mm -hmm. It's Um, true to uh, have, you know, you get an eight and a half by 11 sheet of graph paper and you chart a whole year's worth of data on this and it keeps mm-hmm. going up and it keeps well then you have to get another piece and tape it up and above on the next piece you know so i had right. this stepwise chart going up my wall <laughs> yeah 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 that's fantastic so i was you know started discretionary then i ended up you know becoming systematic and obviously you know now most of everything i do pretty much everything i do has to go through a, a back testing process and you know, understand did this really work um do you feel like uh, you know, a discretionary trader can do that, uh, you know, in the same manner or, you know, or do you feel like they should go find someone to say, hey, here are my rules. Can you please back test it for me? There you go. That's much better. It yeah, I think like when, you're, when you're just doing discretionary, you really can't, unless you're really thinking hard about it, you can't tell people what your rules are. And if you can't, if, if you don't have a set of rules, even if you're discretionary, if you have a set of rules and you follow them, and you're not mm-hmm. exactly discretionary, are you? Right, right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But you've got to be able to name year. your methods. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I remember programming my first strategy. Uh, you know, there's there's no there's no vagueness, right? Everything's concrete. Uh, so it makes if you really this, think hard about that. things. You said you sell your, your indicators. Do you sell mm-hmm. sunny bands? Is that? I do. Okay. I but do. But they... Um, I'm assuming they don't get to see the source code. Is that just something? No, that... they don't. <laughs> I see. No. That, that makes, that makes no. a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. No, it's locked up okay. tight. Um, okay. You know, it's, I don't, I don't want the code getting out there. That's maybe see, maybe, maybe chat GPT could program it. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I did, I tested out chat GPT and 
I, I don't think it's that great of a, uh, a tool for trading simply because all it, all it is is a language model that takes the most common stuff and gives you generic advice. So, and uh, you know, you've had a system, you've got one system and you've stuck to it for all of these years. So yeah. um, that's, that's really, really impressive. Now, have you tried to develop other strategies? Or oh, like, absolutely. You know this works? Okay. Oh, okay. absolutely. I've got bankers boxes full of, lots and lots of bankers okay. boxes full of things I've tested. Okay. My next and book, did, after yeah. I finish this one, is called mm -hmm. Grading the Gurus. And so okay. I'm taking systems that are in people's books that they put out. I'm interviewing <laughs> oh, the author and testing their yeah. strategies. Yeah, I'm buying that one immediately because <laughs> I, uh, I, so one of the reasons why I sort of started my blog and my channel, uh, and I'm not obviously not going to name any names, and obviously there's some certain you know, I'm going to be nice and say that different markets and different time periods may be different results. But when I backtest some of this stuff in some of these books, I'm getting vastly different results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know. I don't understand necessarily why. Obviously, um, you know, there's some that work and I think there's some great ideas, uh, but some of the more... Um, you know, higher compounding strategies don't don't really seem to be working as well as the author mm -hmm. might make it mm -hmm. to be. So I'd like I, to that uh, I bought a strategy like that once upon a time that was from a well-known author mm -hmm. and strategy developer. And in his advertising in, I think it was Stocks and Commodities magazine, mm -hmm. said this system made $14,500 in the last four months. I'm like, that's not bad. You can right. compound on that pretty easily. I want to get it. So I spent $1,000 and I got it. And it was true. It did make 14500 in the last four months, but it didn't make any money since or before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's... That, that, and then it... Yeah. Truth in so advertising, I, huh? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there because I've got, you know, lots to say about that. But uh, again, that's the reason for this. But channel, nothing but, kind. Uh, My mother yeah. told me if you don't yeah. have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. It, Exactly, exactly. But I think you bring up a really, really good point. D uh, you know, don't believe anything online, even if it's my stuff or your stuff. Test, 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 test. If you mm -hmm. can't test systematically, either pay someone to test it for you or do a really big deep dive because there's a lot of misinformation uh, about all sorts of things. And I think even, you know, I'm doing one test right now, um, you know, on a very popular book. It's, it's something called uh, AVWAP. And it does work to some degree, but maybe not for the reasons that, you know, people realize like you can just throw a moving average and it does the exact same thing. It has nothing to do with the volume weight. And I use linear regression and all this other stuff to figure out, okay, what, you know, you know what's the correlation and the real alpha behind this? And uh, again, it's sort of like, so this works, but maybe not the reason why people think it works. Mm, so I yeah. love, I love the fact that you're gonna, gonna, you know, check out some <laughs> of those strategies. And you know, I'll I may not have, be I may buyer. not have any friends when I'm done. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So I, yeah, so um, you know, it's one of those things where, um, yeah, it's just I feel like it's important because almost there's so much misinformation out there. Test and, mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I love that. So. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Oh, and um, this, this is also brings up, this is why I give a seven day free trial to my sunny bands. Mm -hmm. So you can use it, try it out on sim mode, see what you get, test it. And, and I also do zoom calls with whoever okay. gets a trial and I help them set it up and I go through the rules with them. And then I go through another, another day, day or two later, I'll go through a live trading session with them and help them trade it. Right. All the, all that for free. So, okay. you know, you can, uh, all you have to do is, is text Sunny Bands to my phone, my cell phone, and I'll send you a trial. So you must uh, obviously get a lot of joy out of teaching new traders and helping. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can tell because obviously that's a lot of effort uh, that you know. Obviously, you, you could nobody be else more does. Money elsewhere, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. No, I enjoy uh, teaching them, and more than that, I enjoy when the like. I just got an email this morning from a guy who said he's he's using the trial and he couldn't believe it, but he already read made three hundred fifty dollars this morning. He's going to quit uh, for the day. Oh, that's fantastic! You know, yeah. this thing works. I'm like, okay, right. thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, really no, cool. that's great. 
Yeah. Now, do you have any concerns about, uh, you know, if, you know, obviously if more and more people trade it, that maybe that alpha uh, will go away? Um, or you're, I don't you're really sell enough for that to happen. Okay. Uh, okay. That's not my primary business, you know. Sure. I, I, I sure. trade. That's what I do. Okay. But, okay. you know, I sell a few sunny bands here and there. Sure. And if it and ever got have... to the place that it was too many, I would stop. So um, in regards to, um, you know, maybe some advice to, uh, you know, traders and maybe something that, um, you know, is, is widely known or a big misconception or, you know, what, what's a good piece of advice or alpha that you could uh, give to maybe some, some traders that are listening today? Well, my, my best advice is come up with a theory and test it. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of people don't want to test their theories and you know why? Because they don't believe in them. They don't want to yeah. know the answer. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to know the answer, you shouldn't be trading it. But they want to hope. Right. You know, People really want to hope that it's going to work. Yeah. Test it, yeah. test it, test it. If you don't know how to yep. test, give me a call. We'll talk about it. Yeah, hope, hope doesn't pay you. <laughs> no, it sure doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of one of the things that I that I love about this conversation is that, you know, trading really is that this simple. Um, you know, it there's is. a lot out there that that makes it complex and and you know tough. And sure, developing the sunny bands and developing your strategies, it's not easy. Um, and obviously, uh, if you don't have trust in your systems, it's not easy. And st still, maybe. Maybe I need to, you know, I, I have tested my systems and sometimes I probably turn them off when I shouldn't. But hey, I guess that's just me needing to grow. As, uh, but, um, but it really is, you know, all of the best traders, especially the systematic says, come up with, you know, a few, you know, a simple strategy or a few simple strategies mm -hmm. and execute on that and make sure mm -hmm. that you trust and believe in them. And one of the things that I like, too, is your sunny bands, even though the math is complicated, it's simple. I know my first strategy for whatever reason, I thought, oh, I'm just going to make the biggest world best, you know, the holy grail. And I made it so complex at the end of the day, I, I, I couldn't trust it. And I didn't right, know what it was doing. Right. And, you know, you need a uh, few set, a few well-designed rules, not a whole bunch of really complex rules. Right. The only right. thing that's complex about sunny bands is the dynamic moving average is calculating its own values. That's all. Sure, sure. Yeah. And I think one of the nice things about that is because of that, you don't have to create any regime filters or, or mm -mm. anything like that. Right. OK. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the challenges that, that I have with some of my strategies is, is, is they work in some markets and not in others. So <laughs> right. That's, right. I think I think where my challenges come from, I'm like, I think, there, you know, I see that it's still within the bounds of expected losses and but it's doing worse than I would like it to. And then I, yeah. you know, make it my own mistake. So. So I, I like that how yours dynamically adjusts. So. Well, there's three kinds of markets. There's bulls, yeah. there's bears, and there's chickens. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's the, right. The chickens are when everybody's afraid to make trades and they just go sideways. Yeah, yeah. Which it's been that's doing true. since last July. Yeah. I'm tired of this now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, it can't stay this way forever. So it'll, you know, yeah, eventually it'll... at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and... Uh, you know who Glenn Neely is? I, I don't. You should interview him sometime. He's a okay. he developed a, a it's not um, he calls it Neo Wave. It's not Elliott Wave. It's he counts it differently. Okay. And and he's very good at predicting where the markets are going. I don't predict. Okay. I just follow along. Sure, sure. But but Glenn has predicted that we are right on the edge of a brand new extended bull market. Okay. No, that's that's great. Yeah, I, I'm not good at predicting. I've tried it, <laughs> but I Doesn't simply work. find it's easier to react. Yeah, I do a I do a show on Mondays from the with uh, Timing Research, David Cosmeter's mm -hmm. group, mm -hmm. and they start right out with, "Okay, what do you predict? The, where do you predict the market's going to be by Friday?" And I'm never more than fifty percent sure. I don't know. I think it might right. go up, but I don't know. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah. On a five-minute yeah, chart, I'm looking at the next bar, not Friday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, yeah. That's that's how I trade too, right? I, I react. You know, I can see a breakout. I can see, you know, an you know parabolic short. I've got a few different you know strategies that I use. Um, 
you know, I've, and for me, quite frankly, I've stolen all of them, right? <laughs> I see other traders. Actually, no, there's a few, there's one or two strategies. It's sort of used in two that, that I actually came up with my own thoughts. But, uh, but I think <laughs> there's enough, enough, uh, enough out there to find good traders or strategies that, that work uh, mm -hmm. now. Not like mm -hmm. whenever you first started. There's um, nothing. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. remember when, you know, I'm old enough to remember when dial-up, uh, and the internet, can, and you had to like argue with your. You your put family, your phone like, oh, in this phone. little cradle yeah. with two suction yeah. cups, and yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, and my, uh, I had an African gray parrot, and they're mm -hmm. like the best talkers. And yeah. as soon as I'd get that phone and head toward that modem, he'd start going. Shh. <laughs> that's so funny. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's great. That's great. But yeah, I, I remember back then, you know, there wasn't a lot out on the web, right? Uh, no. People were still like, is this actually something? When I yeah, put yes. my, uh, Money Mentor on the web in 1995, there were 10,000 oh, wow. users of, okay. of the entire internet. There were 10,000 yeah. users. Yeah. Now there's 5 billion. Yeah, that's amazing. And it's been up ever since. Okay. It's changed wow, a lot fantastic. over the years, but it's been there since 1995. Sure, sure, sure. No, oh, that's great. So, okay, well, Sonny, I really appreciate uh, your time today. So, how can uh, my audience get a hold of hold of you if they want to get in touch? Excellent. There's two ways: Sonny with a U at moneymentor.com, or my phone, which is my cell phone that's with me everywhere, seven six zero nine zero eight three zero seven zero. I welcome calls. Fantastic. Yeah, and and she's not kidding either. You messaged me, and I called you right, and you picked up right yeah. right then. Uh, Nobody yeah, answers so, uh, my phone for me. I do it. Yeah, no, that's 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 fantastic, and uh, yeah, I'd love to. I can't wait to uh, see your, your. I know you're working on that that big book, but the next, you know, your back testing book. I uh, I can't wait. I'll That'll be fun. That one with my audience. Yeah, cool. yeah, it will. It will. So perfect, Sunny. I appreciate the time today. Uh, once again, thank you for being so generous uh, with your time and sharing some of your trading wisdom. And uh, can't wait to stay in touch. Thank you, Leo. I really enjoyed it. All right. All right. Take care. You All too. Right. Have Bye. a good day. And that's it for this episode of AlphaCast. Please like and share on whatever platform you're listening on. And check out the show notes at analyzingalpha.com front slash podcast.